What you are watching are the tragic final moments of a man's life. It was just so quick. Like one second I see him walking and alive, and the next second he's not. Fire department. It was the fatal hit and run that became international news, made all the more shocking because of the man behind the wheel, the infamous Marion Suge Knight. Yo, Suge, what was the fight about, man? Can you say anything about the allegations against you? Once called the most feared man in hip hop as co founder and CEO of Death Row Records. Suge helped define the West Coast rap scene of the 90s. But with his ruthless kingpin image came allegations of very real criminal behavior. Violent shakedowns, brutal assaults, even murder. The world may never know if, as many have claimed, Suge Knight had anything to do with the deaths of Biggie or Tupac. But there's no denying this one. So far, the people we've talked to said it looked like it was an intentional act. So we're handling it as a homicide. Was it all a terrible accident or another example of a dangerous man's well-publicized rage? And just who was the person caught in the path of Suge Knight's deadly drive? He's just not another victim. He's my father. He is Terry Carter. At the time of his death, Terry Carter was trying to do what some might consider impossible, negotiate a peace between the former death row heavy and his old associates, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. It was a job Carter was uniquely positioned to do. That was Terry, always trying to help, always trying to be the mediator in conflicts in the neighborhood or wherever. Carter was in some ways the ultimate hip hop insider. In his custom car shop, he actually created the drop-topping lowriders you've seen in rap videos like Dr. Dre's Let Me Ride and Mac 10's On Them Things. And as the founder of Heavyweight Records, he produced music for multiple high-profile artists, including Ice Cube. He was the man. He was the straw that stirred the drink, as they say. And unlike the man now accused of taking his life, he did it all with a delicate touch. He wanted to bring everybody together. He was the problem solver. He was Mr. Fix-It. He made it OK for everyone to get along in the hip hop business. There was a couple of times where things happened to artists, and he would make a peace treaty. He would just put everyone together and make it happen. But it wasn't just how he operated his label. Bringing people together was Terry's life. He married his childhood sweetheart, Lillian, had three adoring children, and still found room in his heart for more, a lot more. He took in about 10 of my cousins and treated them all like they were his kids, brought them all cars, brought, put them all through college, housed them, fed them, even as adults, still acted as a second father for them. Unfortunately, for all the wrong reasons, Terry's reputation as a unifier is now a part of official court record. He was trying to, he really was trying to help someone else, and that's probably the reason he's not here today. Straight out of Compton. By now, millions of people have seen the NBC Universal biopic documenting the rise and fall of NWA. But less well known was the real life drama reportedly going on behind the scenes between Suge Knight and the movie's producers, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. Word on the street was that Suge Knight was not happy with his violent portrayal. And according to some, that's where Terry came in. I know a few days prior, Terry had told me he was trying to do something to help a relationship between two parties, and I think that's why he was even there. With his deep ties to the hip hop community and known skills as a mediator, he seemed to be the ideal man to broker a peace. But before he'd ever get the chance, a deadly series of events were set in motion. January 29th, Dre and Cube were in Compton shooting a short commercial for the movie. They were uh, doing a scene up and down the street here on Central with the car and the, you know, the, the, the movie stuff. And, um, you know, they were actually right there at that exact spot. According to witness testimony, Suge was stopped by security, then got into a verbal altercation with one of the film's advisors, an ex-gang member, Knight Newell, Clee Bone Sloan. After that, 
Shug drove off and, according to at least one report, again reached out to Terry to arrange a meeting. A parlay, Terry Carter, the mediator, readily agreed to. Does that make it even harder when you know he was trying to do something good? Absolutely. Like, there's no question about that. It kind of is like, gosh, you shouldn't try to help everybody. A short time later, surveillance captures Suge's bright red Ford F-150 pulling into this parking lot. And then... I just went by so fast. Chaos. It was literally, like, four seconds. Coming up, is Marion Suge Knight guilty of cold-blooded murder? And will the former death row kingpin finally face justice? <laughs>